John, uh, we're so glad to have you here. And um, you know, you kind of got the million dollar question, I guess. You know, it's like <laughs> men, manhood, rape. <laughs> Can you talk to us about the stereotypes about manhood? Directly speak to this issue of, of rape and break it down for us a little bit. Sure. Um, first of all, hi everybody. Um, I've done a lot of work about the relationship between ethics and identity, and by that I mean how do you know what you know? And, you know, a simple example, she thinks she knows him well, and they, she thinks she knows him. And then he does something, and she says, who are you? You know what I'm saying? It's like that sense in which our choice making, our cumulative choice making becomes the character that we are perceived to be, and in fact becomes the character that we are. And the reason I think this is important is for two reasons. One is I think it has a real, it's central to the way in which we send out prevention messages, which I want to get oh. to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, well, um, the other thing is, I'm speaking now to the people in the room who are raised as men who are part of this, and I think it's really important to kind of get a, a handle on this issue of one's own relationship to one's choices and who that makes one become and who that makes one in the eyes of the people one cares about. It's, it's kind of important to ground oneself there and it's partly because having heard the stories from your female friends and sisters of their experiences and having maybe known who did it and having maybe known perpetrators in your own social circle, circle it can be very, very dislocating and very, very un ungrounding in terms of how do you be present and be responsible and play a real role in the work of preventing and ending and interrupting sexual assault. I did a piece years and years ago called Rapist Ethics and in it I basically talked about the model in which a lot of us raised to be men are raised and that is that when you do something wrong, it isn't you who did the wrong, it's the one to whom you did it who did the wrong. And this plays itself out, of course, in rape myths. Um, the responsibility, the accountability for the perpetrator, for the perpetration of the act is shunted, is he, he, the perpetrator divests it, himself of it and foists it all on the person to whom it was done. It was, she did the wrong, and in fact, she internalizes that. I was the one who did the wrong. That's rapist ethics in a nutshell. That's the way in which accounting for the um, values in the action, the choice making, it gets completely skewed and it works its way out in the way in which gender is played out and inhabited in the society a lot as well. Which brings me around to how rape myths hurt men. I asked Sonia if it's okay if I said that and she said, yes, we need to talk about it. And by that I mean, the mythology in the culture that stigmatizes women, that blames women, that holds them to account for that, which was done to them, it all is a way of uncentering men's own sense of self. And by that I mean the very core identity of oneself, which is not about oneself as a man necessarily, it's oneself as someone who makes choices, who takes responsibility for those choices, who isn't always perfect, who sometimes makes mistakes but takes responsibility for those mistakes. That core character, which everybody needs to be known and to know anybody and to connect meaningfully with anybody else, everybody needs to be in that centered self. Great myths displace it. Great myths mess with it. Great myths blow it up, really, and make it something that is unrecognizable. And I, I don't know if you want me to go on, but um, in the prevention messaging that I've worked out, it's always been, it's always come out of that sense of how do you talk to people raised to be men in a way that speaks to them as if they're capable of moral choice, choice making, because I really think that is an important key in how we do the prevention work. Um, you have to enforce that possibility. You have to 
speak to it as if it's there. Men need to be addressed as if that is expected of them. They need to be held to that standard. They need to be held to that standard by their men friends and by their women friends. So the prevention messaging that I've come up with, one of it began with six words, probably the best six words I've written. My strength is not for hurting. I don't know if anyone has, if you have seen the, the prevention materials that come from that. It spun out in lots of ways. So if I paid for the date, she didn't owe me. So if she wanted me to stop, I stopped. So if she said no, I said okay. It was all about modeling and affirming positive behaviors that came out of a sense of self that's reflected in that line, my strength is not for hurting. And it's, it's, a, it's a statement about selfhood and it's a statement about capacity for choice making.